All right, let me take this AI generated article on Medium. I'm gonna copy the whole thing and paste it into Quillbot's AI content detector. Okay, there we go. Let's click detect AI. Well, they caught me. These AI content detectors represent the percentage of words that are likely AI generated or content that has been refined using an AI tool. And how they usually work is they look through the text and they grab consistent words that are known to be used frequently by AI tools such as ChatGPT. A big one I always notice is the word additionally. And for a while in my autoblogger tools, I was specifically fined in replacing this word, removing it all together, and then auto capitalizing the next word. So additionally, this social transformation marked a crucial step towards gender equality, would turn into just this social transformation marked a crucial step towards gender equality. But that's just one word. There are lists of hundreds and hundreds of common AI generated words that a manual writer would have to go through the text that was created with AI and post process it to remove that language. Can we get this number down from 100% to something more reasonable? And can we do it with prompting? I scoured the web, looked at a bunch of forums of people all trying to do the same thing. And I tested a bunch of these prompts. And these are the ones that I found work the best. In this post 10 months ago on the ChatGPT Pro subreddit, a user suggested how to create 100% human written content with ChatGPT. And this comes from a Lex Friedman podcast episode with Edward Gibson, where he talks about the syntax, grammar, and large language models. In the podcast, he mentions something called Dependency Grammar Framework. And it's a linguistic framework where words in a sentence are connected based on their dependencies. And these dependencies show how each word relies on a main word, like a verb, to form meaningful structures. This user suggests that you can add this prompt to the end of your original prompt to ensure that the output is 100% human written without compromising any of your other instructions. In this prompt, he says, use the dependency grammar linguistic framework rather than phrase structure grammar, which I'm assuming this is how the AI models were trained. And this is the most common output of the models. So we're switching out the output. We're switching out the framework. Continuing, the idea is that the closer together each pair of words you're connecting are, the easier the copy will be to comprehend. So let's hop on over to ChatGPT and test it out. I'm going to start off with an extremely simple prompt. Write me an article about the benefits of meditation. And then let's copy this prompt. I'm going to add it to the end and let's send it in and see what it creates. Now, this is not what we want. Look how short this article is. It says meditation helps mind focus, stress drops, body feels lighter thoughts slow down, peace grows. This feels almost like a poem rather than an article. And I wonder if it's because it's using that dependency grammar linguistic framework. Anyways, I'm going to copy this and paste it into the AI content detector. Let's click detect AI. And we're still getting 52%. It's thinking the last paragraphs are written by AI. And based on my testing, this is actually a pretty good result. But the text is way too short. I'm going to put this time, write me a full length article on the NBA expansion teams that never made it. Let's grab that extra prompt again, paste it in, send it through. I actually don't like the style of this type of text. It still sounds like a poem to me. It's just expanding it now. The NBA has always looked to grow. Some cities got teams. Others tried and failed. Many proposals came close. Some had owners, arenas, and fans ready. Let's copy this text, paste it into the AI content detector. Let's click detect AI again. And look at this. This time we got 0%. 0% of the text is likely AI. So we do have something here with this prompt, but I don't think this is the only thing that works. Another one I like to use is something like aim for a flesh reading score of 80 or higher. Use the active voice and avoid adverbs. Avoid buzzwords and instead use plain English. And then you can add something like avoid being salesy or overly enthusiastic. 
and instead express calm confidence. If I copy this prompt and use it on my MBA expansions team's article, let's see if we can lower the AI content detecting score. To me, this article reads a bit better, but let's see if it passes the AI content detector test. Here, I'm gonna paste it in, click detect AI, and we got 67% of the text is likely AI. The last thing we can do is remove the most common AI words and phrases. As I showed earlier, words like additionally, therefore, however, consequently, all of these words that are not usually used in regular human language, they're obviously used, but very infrequently. AI content generators seem to use them all the time. So it's possible to take a list of all of these words. There's another big one, in conclusion, and then add that list to your prompt. Going through, obviously, I wouldn't want a lot of these removed. To me, it's weird to remove moist, enigma, dance. I don't know why you would remove dance. What if the article is about dance? So I would really have to go through and purge this list properly. I think it'd be a good idea to keep track of all the articles that you create with something like ChatGPT, read them through and make an AI words list for yourself. But anyways, I'm going to send this in and see what it comes up with. Okay, here is my AI generated article. I'm gonna paste it into an AI content detector, click detect AI, and with removing that words list, we get a percentage of 47%. So you can see there are a bunch of different strategies that work. And I think probably the best strategy is a mix of all of them. In my personal experience, it's always better to post-process, which means rewrite the content with your new prompt, rather than adding that text to the bottom of your already fully complete prompt. And the reason being is that the AI agents, especially if you use the lower models, they get overwhelmed with your requests. So the less requests that you have in your original prompt, the better. And if you have a long article prompt, like in this one, I'm asking it to write a product review article. I want it to structure the article with an introduction, key features, pros and cons, who's it for, final thoughts. I want it to be unique, clear, and engaging. And this is actually a pretty short one. If I also wanted to provide examples of how I want the output to look, this could get very bloated very quickly. So what I like to do is I always like to send it in first, get that article output, and then post-process it with something like rewrite that article and aim for a flesh reading score of 80 or higher. This way it follows your instructions in the original prompt, and then we post-process it, cleaning up the language. Now, if you don't want to do this manually, if you don't want to do this by hand, and you want an AI agent to handle this humanizing task for you, I've recently built this feature into your AI agent. So just find your favorite auto-blogging task for example, the new Google Trends to Post AI agent, what we're doing is we're extracting Google Trends data from the past 24 hours and transforming it into content. So I'm gonna click Start Now on this agent. You're gonna select your connection in the drop-down box at the top of the page. This is usually the website that you've connected. And we connect to many different website platforms right now. We have Blogger, Framer, Ghost.org, Hashnode, HubSpot, Medium.com, Shopify, a Supabase database, Webflow, WordPress.com, and WordPress.org. Each of these tabs have video instructions on how to connect your website to autoblogging. I have many other videos on my channel about how to set this up. I'll leave a link to a playlist in the description below. But continuing on, Google Trends to Post. I'm going to select my Medium website. I'm going to select my content scheduling. It's going to scrape Google Trends every day. It's going to post on all days of the week. I'm going to keep the title prompt the same. I'm going to keep a default agent prompt. This is me telling the AI agent how to create my articles. I want to target Canadian trends. I live near Toronto, Ontario. So this is most relevant for my business. I want to publish all the articles that are produced. And here we see the new feature called Humanizer. So the Humanizer toggle, it rewrites your article for a more natural tone and improved readability. And just a word of note that this modifies your original prompt so you'll have less control over the final output. And like I showed earlier, this is a post-processing step. 
So if you wrote a giant agent prompt and you wanted your articles to look a specific way, even sound a specific way, when we post process it with the humanizer prompt, it's going to take away some of that magic that you originally prompted it. But if you're okay with that and you like the type of prompts that we showed earlier, then you can toggle this on. I give you two options. I give you a readability option. This has to do with the flesh reading score. I'm going to keep it at eighth and ninth grade easily understood. And then we also have an option to remove AI words. And it's going to take a specific list of words that I have collected over time and it's going to remove them from the output and either replace them or ignore them altogether. So you'll get more human like sounding text that doesn't flag these AI content detectors. So here I'm going to go basic list and now continuing with my agent workflow. I want to include images, maybe use the flux Schnell model. I won't add some boilerplate text or topics and tags for this example, but then I can click start agent. And then this Google trends to post automation is going to scrape Google trends daily, pick out a randomly trending topic, search for that topic in Google, grab some news articles about that topic, and then take that information and write your own content for your website. And then beautifully with the humanizer prompt, we'll be able to post process that text so that it sounds more natural. Paste that agent's output into Quillbot's AI content detector. And there we go, that's a pretty good result. If you want your content marketing on autopilot and you wanna try out the new humanizer tool, it's all done automatically for you in the back end, and it doesn't add any extra step onto your plate. You can check it out at youraiagent.com. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. If you want to learn how to build your own AI agents and turn it into a profitable web app, check out my online course, How to Build a Custom AI App. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.